And your hands are shaking. Here. Hold on this. Hold tight. Okay. Hold tight. Now settle in a minute. Okay? So hold tight. Thank you. I don't know your name. Sean. Sean. I'm Molly. Please meet you, Molly. I wish you were under happier circumstances. Our chocolate's a casualty. But we've got a phone. Would you like me to call someone? Your mom, maybe? No, please don't. I don't want her knowing anything is wrong. Mind if I ask why not? Well, she freaks out easily. And a lot's gone on lately. So what happened? Did someone try to hurt you? I'm broken inside. Why would you say something like that? I'm bipolar. Sorry. Are you on meds? Oh, I haven't been to a doctor. I diagnosed myself. Pretty heavy diagnosis for such a little lady. Well, it's hereditary. I probably got it from my dad's side of the family. Unless there's something on my mom's side that we don't know about, which is entirely possible. The Cassidines are notoriously dark. So is my Uncle Sonny on my father's side. He's very bipolar. He's on meds now, so... Well, as a rule, it's, uh, it's best to get a conclusion like that from a medical profession. Let's run with it. What are your symptoms? Well, I have trouble focusing. I mean, one day I couldn't even conjugate the French verbs that I knew the night before. Another time I got so mad at my sister that I threw my mom's vase on the floor, which is so not me. I burst into tears for no apparent reason. I don't want to get out of bed or go to school. I even missed a day when I was supposed to get an award for heroism, which is kind of a joke. So what set you off before I walked up? A car accident. Oh yeah, I saw that when I was walking over. I heard the brake screech and then the crash and... I just lost it. Completely. God. If I'm this bad now... <laughs> I'll probably have to be committed into an asylum like Lucy Graham and Lady Audley's secret. Who knows? I might even die abroad. You probably think I'm being melodramatic. You feel how you feel. I thought maybe a little misguided about why. I know a little bit about this topic. Really? I have mood swings. One day I'm bawling like a baby, next in a rage so bad I can literally tear a room apart. I even heard this car backfire and I throw myself to the ground, dodging bullets that weren't flying. You're bipolar too? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Ex-Marine. I've read about that. A lot of soldiers are coming home with it. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth, it's devastating. That messes with all your notions about who you are. I mean, you, you go through life thinking you're a strong person. But this thing sneaks up on you, knocks you flat. Like, a little bit at a time? You think you're all right, but then you get blindsided by an emotion that doesn't even fit the situation? Or it does. But yeah, you got it. You keep up with what's going on in the world? Pretty much. My company was between Kabul and Kandahar. Everything normal. Well, as normal as it gets over there. Suddenly everything was noise, chaos, men down. It took an instant. You don't have the luxury of letting yourself think, much less feel. You have to get your men out, save as many as you can, carry on with the mission. That must have been really hard. It was. I just didn't know it at the time. I thought I was handling it. I finished my tour, came home, 
started to unravel. How? I couldn't concentrate. I'd forget things. Uh, loud noises would send me jumping out of my skin. I couldn't control my emotions. Didn't know who I would be when I woke up in the morning. I finally realized I needed some help. So, I got some. What about you? Bus accident. On the way to a school weekend. It was like you said, everything was normal. Mm. And out of nowhere, we were flying. The bus hit a patch of ice and ran off the road. Mm. I can still hear the sound it made when it hit the ground. Still feel being weightless traveling through the air. Were you hurt? That's the thing. Two people died, but I was fine. I shouldn't be so flipped out. Now you experienced the trauma. Uh, it's okay to flip out. You can even stop fighting those tears. Let them out. You'll feel better. Molly? Are you okay? No. But getting better thanks to my new friend, Sean. Hi. I'm Sean Butler. Carly Jacks. Molly's aunt, sort of. You from around here? Ex-military. Working in private security. I've got an interview with a local law firm. I was passing by. I saw Molly here trying to crawl up the woodwork. I stopped to see if I can help. And he did. She was so freaked out. There was a car accident. Sean thinks I have post-traumatic stress disorder. From the bus crash? Now she has all the indicators. Not that I'm qualified to diagnose in a medical sense, but I've been there. I recognize the signs. It was a rough night, huh? It's probably gonna take a while to get over it. Uh, true. But I've got a feeling you're gonna be just fine. Thanks, Sean. It's a pleasure to meet you both. Same here. Thank you for stopping by. Yeah. Glad I can help. You take care now. I will. So this Siobhan uh, person doesn't want me to handle the immigration case. She wants you to handle it. Only you. So maybe there's something you're not telling me. And if there is, I think you should probably knock, knock. tell me about it. Hi. Okay. All right. Talk to you later. What's going on? Well, I was on my way to the library and there was a car accident. Are you okay? I wasn't in it. I was way up on the sidewalk. But when I heard the brakes screeching and then the cars hit... Uh, apparently it reminded her of the bus crash and she was um, oh, shaky. Okay. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. You're okay. It's a good thing you were there. You know, I showed up at the end, but um, oh, this guy was there and um, he helped. Oh, let's see. His name is Sean. He's an ex-Marine. Apparently he helped her through the panic attack. I have to run, so. Well, thank you for bringing her home. No problem. You feel better, okay? Molly? Uh, are you really fine? Actually, I'm better than I thought. Post-traumatic stress disorder seems a lot better than being bipolar. What? What do you, what, what, why are you mentioning being bipolar? Because it runs in families, so I went to go see Uncle Sonny. You told me you were going over there to do some sort of report. And then you said you were going to the library. Did you go to the library? Well, I was on my way, so I could do more research into bipolar disorder. Uncle Sonny tried to reassure me, but I wasn't in... Oh, what was it? Stop. Take a breath. Start from the top. And be prepared to tell me why I'm just now hearing about this. The vase, I really started to worry. That was me, by the way, not Christina. She covered for me. 
Did, did you tell your sister that you thought you were bipolar? No, I didn't want to worry anyone. Instead, I went online and researched my symptoms. Then when it led to bipolar disorder, I stopped there because of Uncle Sonny. But what Sean said makes more sense. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to make an appointment with an actual therapist, and we're going to see how a professional weighs in on this. Okay? And we're going to just take this one step at a time and do everything that we can so that you feel better as a family. Is that a plan? A good one. Small world. Well, say. I'm staying here. What's your excuse? My husband and I own the hotel. Nice. How's Molly? She's good. I took her home. She's with her mom, who's very grateful. I gave her your card, so she'll probably be calling you to say thank you. Uh, no thanks necessary. It was the right place, right time kind of thing. I feel good to make a little bit of a difference. Going about what you said before, it sounds like you experienced your own trauma over that crash. My sons were on the bus. You may be more equipped to deal with the aftermath than Molly being the adult and all, but it might take time for you to get past the trauma of that night, too. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah, you know, you've been great, and I'd like to express my gratitude, not just for being so kind to Molly, but for your service. So consider your room and anything else on the Metro Court. Well, that's an awfully generous thing to do for someone you know absolutely nothing about. 